Hi, Bob Sweeney with Power Break TV. We're still touring the uh, SEMA show. Stopped in to see all the uh, these fantastic new, new old Ford engines being uh, produced. Mostly for the Cobras, but uh, uh, we're seeing the new uh, hemispherical design engine coming out. In uh, addition to a complete aluminum version of the 427 FE motor, classic Cobra style. And uh, Tom's going to tell us about all the new engines they have. Well, actually, some of the engines aren't new. The, the uh, FE block has actually been out of for around 12 years, the Carol, Carol Shelby. Uh, the 351 block, the aluminum block, has been out for about four or five years. We just recently introduced the 302 block, so we really have the whole Ford uh, pushrod family uh, covered with that. And then on top of that, we have the new hemispherical design 351 Windsor. This is actually called a Shelby 427H motor. It's based on a 351 Windsor. It's been more destructive 427. Uh, carbureted, it's an old, it is an old two-valve hemispherical headed design push rock. Carbureted, it's developing about 750 horsepower. So uh, we're pretty excited about this. And we did actually fit one in a Shelby. Uh, Shelby Cobra, even though it, uh, it required some extensive modification to make it. Have you, do you have any dyno figures on this engine with the uh, Dominator? Yeah, the Dominator, we had a 1050 Dominator on it in that car. That's the very first motor over in that car. So there's the dyno sheet back on the wall. You can see it's 757 horsepower on pump gas, about 612 foot pounds of torque. Again, on pump gas. Which is a lot of motor for uh, what a 22, 2400 pound car? 2400 pounds. That's just about right. <laughs> just enough. As long as uh, with the Dominator, as long as you keep your foot out of the secondaries, it's actually very streetable. But when you hit the secondaries, it better be pointed in the right direction. <laughs> Niche is the Hydro Boost system. What kind of upgrades do you have on, on the new Cobra versions? Well, actually, the, the Shelby Cobras originally came out with Girling brakes, which weren't any good 50 years ago. Same as the Jaguar? Uh, I think they were similar to the Jaguar. Yeah, or Jaguar ends. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, over the years, they've tried different brake packages. Uh, we had some PBRs on there for a while. Any power assists on the brakes? We haven't. Uh, we had a couple of customers inquire about that. We've just never done it before. Those people could. We have. Now, uh, do a lot of Cobra customers like automatic transmissions or the traditional four-speed guys? We actually have put a lot of automatic transmissions in these cars. We just recently put an automatic transmission in the car. Exactly the same as this, about a 600 horsepower F fuel injected F and it was sold to a lady. And we put a modified C6 transmission in it. Uh, our small block cars, we usually use a C4 transmission if they want automatic. Um, normally, these cars, uh, we will put a Tremec 5 speed TKO 600. This is one of the finished cars. This is actually the very first car that has one of the hemispheric motors in it. If you look down here, you can see how much we had to modify the foot boxes just to make it fit because of the width of the heads. So this is the, this is the very first one. This is actually the first uh, 427H motor and first Shelby that was put in. And over on this side, we have the. Uh, this is. Uh, very similar car, but this has the 427 FE engine um, with a, it's called a Stack 8 fuel injection unit. Uh, it looks like Weber's, but it actually has the injectors inside, so it looks exactly like Weber's. And then we mount the computer and all the relays and everything in the trunk out of the way, so you really can't tell it's fuel injection. Very similar cars, just two completely different engine packages. There's no vacuum here that we can hook into for a vacuum booster. I've told this to uh, Kilborn and Kinsler and uh, 
all the other fuel injection guys that are actually making electronic fuel injectors right. out of out of old manual style injectors. But they have to actually drill the manifold. Well, this we actually weld a plenum underneath the intake manifold and run a port down for each one of the runners because we need it for the map sensor for the fuel injection. For vacuum? Too. Yeah, for vacuum. Yep. All right. That helps a ton. Um, it's, it's actually not as, as easy to get vacuum as it is from a single like a carburetor setup, but it, it does work very well. Yeah. Well, that's uh, another plus for the, our, the hydro boosting. Uh, this is this is our newest aluminum block. This is the 302 block. Again, the 302 and the 351 are very similar. The deck height is really the only difference, the big difference. So this is our newest engine. The engine here in the center, again, is the FE block, which uh, was the first block that Shelby came out with, uh, I want to say about 12 or 14 years ago. That one's been out the longest, and then the Windsor block is, came out about five years ago. I was noticing the thickness of the sleeves on the 302. Is this still the same block as the 351? It's basically the same block. With the, with the reduced size sleeve. Just smaller. Yeah. And again, the deck height is shorter. This is our 427H, Shelby 427H motor. Uh, this is our kind of our latest engine. Nick Aries Jr. did the heads for us, true hemispherical design head, uh, two valve push rod engine, developing uh, about 750 horsepower and we're really aspirated on pump heads. This is the, uh, the hemispherical combustion chamber he's talking about. Notice a hemisphere is half of a circle, so that's what this is all about. The advantages of a, of a hemispherical chambered engine, the central spark plug location, intake, straight line intake port into the cylinder, almost a straight line exhaust flow out the other side of the head. That's what makes the hemispherical chamber so efficient. So the rocker arm, push rods and rocker arms it takes to work the uh, the valves, which are on opposite sides of the cylinder head, require a long rocker arm for the intake side and the short rocker arm for the exhaust. And that way it can move the valves in this direction. The company in Gardena, which uh, does the blocks and uh, does the engines, puts the engines together, and with the Investing Motorsports in Windsor, California, which is the world's largest authorized Shelby dealer. He sells the, uh, the roller packages and of course sells the engines. And then Speedway Classic Cars is here in Las Vegas and that's where we put everything together for the customer. For the final assembly? Uh, 